and a woman. Actually, it's all women. In knits, eh, not so much. A knit can be, it's a little more, more specific. There's knit with two-way stretch and four-way stretch. And that being said, you, when you start buying and playing with knits, I will say four-way stretch is usually more forgiving. And it's also more expensive too. Uh, especially with dresses and tops and things. So, and as for bias, it depends on the fabric. Just because you also have something unbiased doesn't mean it's gonna stretch a lot more. It, it depends. You have to know what type of fabric you have. It will give you a gift, but if it's like really heavy brocade or really heavy denim, it's not gonna give you that much. It's, it's not. So you have to know where to use it. And we are gonna use bias this semester. I mean, as a requirement, as well as we're gonna do knits as a requirement too. So, so you have a square and this is how you start. So true bias is like, the 45 degree angle in your fabric. So what you do is like you cut, you pull this into two ends. And what I like to do, really press it lightly with my fingers, where the diagonal meets, right? Just press it lightly. You don't have to press this with the iron because you don't want a permanent crease. You just want a guide where to draw your line so I can see it here and you just draw it the best way you can and this one needs to be very visible this line is gonna be the main line for everything unlike before remember how we used to do apex lines or your waist no like this bias is a little bit trickier your front is what's gonna like, your center front is what's gonna dictate where you at. You always have to check it. Okay. So that being said, this is when you also decide how deep you want your cowl. Now, everyone has like, meaning, depending, you're allowed to do whatever size of cowl you want. You can do really, really low, not so low or like up to here. You can even do a cowl in the back. I'm not gonna stop you guys. Do whatever you want. This is the semester to do it. Now, you have to think of it this way. This is my, this corner is gonna be here, right? So a cowl is a straight line, correct? So I'm thinking for me, for my purpose, I kinda want this to hit around here, around her apex. So I am not gonna start with this point. I'm just gonna measure around 10, 10 inches maybe, and go from there. 10 inches, just to guide me. I'm just gonna put a little, like a little notch, just to guide me where that is. I'm not saying that's gonna be a permanent mark, it's just to guide me. So this way I just fold this first and I crease it with my fingers. Right now we're not creasing with the iron because remember, this is not permanent yet. So this is when it gets tricky. I'm matching this line to my center front. Or your center back if you're doing the back, right? But then when I hold these two ends now, I'm gonna hold them to the princess seam. Why do I put the princess seam too? The princess line here, anything further out, you it's gonna fall. You can go in if you want to. That's not an issue. Going in, it's gonna stay on your shoulder. Going outside of the princess seam is gonna make it really hard for this to stay on. Because this is a dress one. Like, and this is also when you, you should not be pinning nonstop. Because then it does not project how the fabric falls. You should be pinning yes enough, okay? So, I am looking at this and I'm thinking, I'm just trying it out. So, if I put my two corners of my cowl neck right here, do I like where this is going? Not really. I think we need to go deeper. And that's what you're gonna do. It's a trial and error with bias. So I think I'm gonna go like three inches. Yeah, let's do deeper. Now, you have to understand, you can even make it, you don't have to pleat into it. You can do whatever you decide to do. 
as long as it's a count. You can even do a symmetrical count, meaning this side goes in, this goes side goes out. You've seen it, in other words. Just different ways to go about it, guys. So um, I'm gonna go four inches deeper. And same situation, I'm just gonna fold this down with my fingers, making sure that my center line matches because the center line is the most important thing. Okay, perfect. Okay. Oh, this is much better already. See that? All right, so this is when you have to kind of, this is when you have to eye everything. Just trusting yourself. I know it feels like, oh, what the heck am I doing? While lining this, you see how I'm lining? You take this end and you pin it. At the same time, you're trying to make sure that this line is not crooked. It's also falling and it's the same distance. It's not, you can see like I'm taking this in, you need to like let it go. Okay, okay that's fine. Try your best to match it. Just try your best. Sometimes you're even looking at the ends, like how much do I have left here? How much do I have on this side? So I just mirror it. So right now this looks more like it. Yeah, this looks more like it. And we just pin it. You're not pinning too much. You're not doing that much. So now you are gonna try to pin this to the body. You're not gonna go. So this is where it gets tricky. You see how it's trying to fold itself, right? and you're trying to match this line, you're gonna match this line to your center front. But you're not gonna pin it all the way up. You're gonna pin it where it needs, meaning my cowl is sitting on top of the apex. I'm not gonna pin beyond the underboss because I need this to fall. I need to see how it falls. If you pin it, you're not gonna see how it falls. All right, so now we are gonna pin this. Now, the other thing we need to um, be conscious of is that we are only gonna work with one side right now. Why one side? Because we can mirror the other side. We're not doing a symmetrical right now. It just needs to be the same. So right now, just matching that correctly. Perfect. Now I can fold it if I want to, play with this. Sometimes you're like, ah, oh, just she doesn't look good, but she's looking better. And I'm just gonna, that's your start. You try to make it equal. And then you, after you do the pinning, you're like, oh my God, I have so much excess here, right? That's what we're gonna work on next. So I want to add more pleats into my cowl. It's, this is up to you if you wanna add more pleats into it or not, that's up to you and how deep your pleats are. So to me, I wanna add more fabric because I like a good cow. But I'm gonna see. I'm just gonna add a little bit. Oh yeah, she's looking really cute now. You see what a difference that makes? Just picking it up. You notice how much beautifulness there is. Now, that's fine. You can look at it. She's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. I think that's where I end. You also remember, this is also a balance of like the more pleats you add, do you wanna create bulk on her arm pole? No, you don't. You don't wanna make her look like she's wider. You need to understand where it's gonna fall. The more pleats you put closer to the arm pole, the more the, the pleats are gonna open in the arm pole and it's not gonna look cute. It's just gonna look like it's gonna pop out. So I think that's where we end, that's it. You can decide to move this point even closer if you want, you can do whatever you can do. Smaller pleats, no pleats, whatever you wanna do. You can make this into here, you can make this into like. So the problem with the cowl though, once you hit the waist, it's very hard for the cowl to stay on top. Because you're like, it's too open, it's gonna be too open. So you have something to control it. So my other thing too, I think what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna also drape the back at the same time and you guys can do all, actually no, let's stop here and then 
recess, okay? So then we're gonna have to take all these excess out. How do we do it? Yes. I know last semester I think everyone was like, oh, I don't wanna cut it, but we're gonna cut it now. So this is we're just gonna cut slashes, slashes. At the same time, I'm making sure that this line does not move, okay? The less it moves, the better for us. Even here, let me just pin it here too, just to make sure nothing moves. Because once it moves, there's no balance. You already lose the balance. Okay, so, you can even cut it away. Just make sure it don't go past your sizing, okay? And you can see that it's already taking shape. It's not pulling as much. So now we're gonna just slash. You can slash everything. And we already have our armhole marked, right? So that's where we just put in our pins. And we're not pulling. This is where you have to have a light hand. Because if I were to pull this, you see, notice how much it changes. We want to keep that shape. And it looks beautiful. She looks flat, she looks nice. So now we're just gonna do that. And then you notice there's drag lines. So we need to, somehow we need to like take this out and we're gonna slash and slash and, okay? And we're gonna slash and we're gonna pull. Okay, so this is where we do. We're gonna slash and pull. You notice like I'm slashing and I'm pulling, but I'm also not, I'm making sure this is not moved. This line cannot move. Okay. Okay, so then we're gonna do this. Now. And this is when I start cutting the bottom too, because it's too much dragging here for no reason, I don't need this anymore. Okay, that's fine. So this is, this is pulling. How do we get rid of it? We slash into the waist. Remember, not beyond your waist. And also same thing guys, is the bottom of your waist or top of your waist? You pick one and you stick with it forever, <laughs> okay? And you notice how much those pulls are like coming out like magic. And now you really, now you really work this out with your hands and you drag it out and you pull it and you put it, you pin your waist. It went from all this excess to very any. And just make sure you secure it really well. You notice that the bias at this point, you don't want it super skin tight either. You just want it to be fitted. Also, another thing that you guys need to understand is that bias grows. So you might have this today, tomorrow, and will grow, because <laughs> it just grows. So even if you're working in bias, it's always best to sew your garment, let it be for two days in a hanger so it grows, and then do your hand. Yes, that's one of the techniques. It's, it looks beautiful when done right, but Imagine you did your ham really fast and then it grew on you and now it's wonky. So you have to let it grow. And like I said, you guys only need one. You only need one piece in bias. You can decide to do a top, a skirt, Everyone knows what a slip skirt, you know, like the skirts, the bias skirts are very like A-line. When it's done correctly, it fits you beautifully. But um, you will notice the difference. So now, we just mark it. This is it. We're done with one side, we're gonna copy to the other side, and we're done. So we're just gonna make sure that we mark it in the shoulder, but we also need to make sure we are marking our pleat. So I'm gonna do it with markers so you guys can see it. Because I need to know where my pleat is, right? 
I need to know where my fleet is and where they meet. If anyone worked with pleats last semester, I know you did, I, a few of you have. If you understand that marking pleats correctly, it's the best way, like it helps you a lot because if you don't, then you're gonna be lost. <laughs> so now I'm just marking it. Marking the armhole, remember, butt on the tape, or top of the tape, you, stay, you stick to one forever, okay? Don't be changing things on me. Now, for this, you don't have to mark everything. This is because it's gonna be straight line. Just here to here. You just need to mark the armhole and the side seam. And I think, and I do bottom of the waist. This needs to be marked correctly because you're gonna see the pattern. Your waistline is not in a straight plane. It's gonna curve out because you're stretching the fabric. The other thing you need to mark is where your first fold is. This is your first fold, right? And then you're gonna mark where the fabric touches the skin the first time. Why? Because you need the facing. You need a facing that's longer than that section. So this way when someone's wearing your cowl neck, and I'm pretty sure you guys seen it, not well constructed cowl necks, you can see the seam coming out from your neckline. And that's not cute. That's why you need to make sure you mark it this way you add at least an inch and a half more fabric to make sure when someone's wearing it, they don't see your edges. And to the point that some people even put magnets and weights inside of there to make a beautiful cowl. And that's the way you do it. And I do have a top, I will bring it next week for you guys to see. And it's, it's actually a uh, chermousse, chermousse silk situations and I love it. So you must mark like this just to remind you how you wanted it. You're not gonna be like, it's gonna do what it's gonna do, but just to remind you when you put it back. And that's all you do. Now, it goes back to, we're gonna true it. That's She's gonna take it out. And I actually like to take out the pleat close because as we noticed last semester too, we draft, the pleat close, we put the seam up, we cut it, right? This way we get the right shape that we want. And that's the part that most people need to, it's like little steps like that just save you so much more time. I'm not even worried about this side because we're just gonna copy it. It's symmetrical, so. And before you know it, I know last semester you, got, you saw me doing this I think it was too much, but now I feel like you get it. You're getting it now. Okay. So now, you notice how my waist is going down slightly here? And everything, yeah, like I'm just gonna make this straight. There's no need to curve it out. Not right now, because also, this girl's gotta breathe. She's gonna eat something, she's gonna drink something. She needs to eat something, okay? You need to give some space. So you're just gonna connect both of them there. You see how my armhole is all the way out? It's because we have pleats here and we have volume. So that's how it behaves. It looks weird now. This looks weird because like, why is this so straight? It's because of how you have pleats on the top. You're manipulating. Now, we're just gonna do our armhole. The good news about the cowl neckline is that once you know what you're doing, it goes really fast. Like it's not, it's not as bad as I think. Cause that's, that's the message that I did this. I know it was a little dissing. Oh, perfect, I'm sorry. I need to make my line better. And now with this one, same thing, always, you always have at least a quarter of an inch where it's really straight, right? And from that quarter of an inch line, we're gonna just do our waist. Now, if you're gonna use charmeuse or chiffon, this type of thing will need to have a French seam because that's the cleanest, that's the best. Um, it makes it more delicate, better finish. And believe it or not, this is basically ours. We're just gonna be 
cutting the, we're gonna make just a straight line because that's a shoulder. And you usually do one inch in the shoulder. Today we're gonna do half an inch because you already have a pleat there. You don't wanna add more bulk, right? It needs to be delicate. So now we're just gonna half an inch. Half an inch. And then we're gonna cut it and we're gonna pin it back. And then everyone's gonna do, we're gonna go into break. And then you do the demo and we'll do the back. The back is gonna be unbiased too. Just so you guys get used to it. The back should be very simple and biased. You guys can do a cowl neck. You can, if you guys wanna do a cowl neck and bias, do it. Go for it. And because it's the same thing to do a bias uh, top, it's the same principle. You match the center front line, you pin it, and then you work on one side and you copy it. Okay. So now you cut it. Oh, no, sorry, that made a mistake there. open this right and now you can really see where your pleat is at you see that and you can see where it closes so you just make little you know little marks this is just a pleat we're not closing it down it's not a pleat uh, in release it's just a pleat in the seam so you just make it this way you know where it closes right here and where it meets okay now We're gonna open this. So now we need to figure it out what's our inside. If I'm not mistaken, this is our inside. So we need to make sure, you notice how like big this section is? We just, this is what I was telling you guys, like we know that's our inside and that's like what the edge is. So now that we're remember the bottom pleat, the top pleat, and then the inside, right? Remember what I was saying, like you put more facing in the inside still, correct? So that's what we're gonna do. This is, that's why we make a little, we're just gonna go like, I will give it like at least two inches, at least this way rolls easily. And then you just make it straight. And same thing, you don't have to worry about this size so much because we are gonna cut it all at once. We're gonna fold it. And we're gonna cut it all at once. Make sure, that's why that line is so important, to make sure that everything it's lined up. Okay. Ow. Now, if you have like carbon paper or tracing wheel, they, that you will actually trace it like that too, the other side. But I don't think we need to because we know what we're doing. The only thing I do mark, no matter what, is the pleat to make sure what I'm pleating and where I'm pleating. So I'm usually just mark it this way, shrink, and here. And that's it. This way, I know 
gets to pleat this section correctly. And I copy it like based on this too, and I just pleat it. I fold it. And I use my princess seam to guide, remember? If you guys want to use something else, let's just say more inside, make sure to mark it. This way when you put it back, you know where, you, uh, where your cowl neckline is falling. It's just, I think it's the princess seam right now, it's just simpler. So yeah, there you go. And this is why I have this guy to remind me, how did this fold? This is the inside, this is the outside, right? Inside, outside, and there was another one. Where are you? Inside. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're missing one here. Oh, here it is. Inside, outside, and then that's the second one. Okay, perfect. Because sometimes once you start taking this off, you're like, how did it work before? <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. Inside, outside edge, and the other feet. And you can even number them if you want to. It's up to you. Whatever works for you guys. And you notice that my line is not crooked. That's the idea. If you take this out and your line is crooked, then you pull too much. It should not be crooked. Ah, there it is so ta -da. I'm gonna do the other side too but this is what it should look like you notice how much there is there's not that much this is where you should be okay guys okay I'll upload this I'll try to write